So you asked for it. So we got it. It's the Lian Li O11 Dynamic Mini. It's not the 11 Dynamic, it is the 11 Dynamic Mini. That's the only one I've got, I'm sorry. Am I a joke to you? Airflow case testing episode two. So episode one was the NZXT H510. You know, some results. We got some results. Ah, it's hardly moving. I won't say if they're good or bad. Go watch the episode if you've not seen it. This is episode two. We asked you guys what case you want to see next. You told us it was the Lian Li O11 Dynamic. That's the one you wanted, that's the one we got. So what we're doing, we've got three fans in the case, but we will be testing a couple of different configurations. The thing about this case is it's glass front panel, glass side panel. Uh, what we want to do is try and give it a fair representation when compared to other cases as well. So I've just put two here, which is representing our front panel, but it's kind of a side panel on this one. And I've got an exhaust at the back there. There is more room. We can get three more on the bottom. We can get three more on the top. If you know anything about this case, you'll know it's designed by DeBauer because they're into extreme overclocking. You know, that's why the case was designed this way for extreme overclocking. So that's why there's so much room for all the fans. Same setup as last time. We've got the fog machine. We've got the box. We've got the case. We send fog into the box. It filters through into the case and we should be able to see what direction the airflow is going in. So first things first, let's get on to the old Fermark. So we've been running the stress test for about six minutes now, but the temperatures have started to sort of flatten off. GPUs of about uh, 86 to 88 and CPUs 83. Now remember, we're stress testing them at 100% and these are old components, so they are gonna get really, really hot. So what I'm gonna do now uh, is check the actual air temperature inside the case. Uh, the room temperature is 22.3, or 22.1 now. So what I'm gonna do is just pop this through. So room temperature is about 22.2, 22.3-ish. So what I'm gonna do is feed that in just at the only available hole I can find, which is at the back. 39.5, 39.6 to seven, uh, 40 degrees at the front. So I'm gonna uh, push that back in again. And now what I'm trying to do is get the probe sort of between the GPU and the CPU. 42.4, so about two and a half degrees hotter. So we're recording the temperatures in Celsius um, because that's what we're using in the UK, but for our American friends who are in Fahrenheit, you can kind of see we're at about 104, 108 Fahrenheit for the actual temperatures inside the case. Time to send some fog through and see what direction the air is actually going in. Ready? You know what, you can actually see really, really well how easy it is for the air to actually get to the GPU. And you can actually see the air, um, yeah, the smoke in the air getting into the uh, CPU cooler there. I thought that this would be a lot more kind of, I, I thought that the air would hang around in there a lot more than it has. I guess the thing about this case configuration is you can see as soon as the air comes in, it has to hit a, height, a 90 degree turn. Like almost immediately there has to be a 90 degree turn in order for it to get over to the components. But it's actually quite effective in that. You can see that, you, you know, this bottom fan that's feeding the GPU, it's doing it really effectively. And we are getting some exhaust out the top, but the main exhaust ultimately is in the back. There is quite a bit of air hanging around over here, but you know what, it is getting pulled through quite nicely by that um, exhaust fan. It, you can see that, that bottom fan is just feeding the uh, GPU pretty much directly, and that top fan is uh, feeding the CPU. Just wanna give a quick shout out to the Lian Li Uni fans. These are the SL120s. Uh, we're not getting paid for this, I just love these fans, so I just wanted to show you the ones I'm using. They clip together in like a daisy chain configuration, which just means there's way less cable management. They're absolutely genius. So I think that gives us a good idea of how effective this case is with just a couple of fans in there. But ultimately, this thing can hold a lot of fans. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reconfigure these and I'm gonna go for a um, bottom to top uh, intake to exhaust configuration. What this could do is ultimately just be feeding cold air to your GPU, which then just pushes hot air into your CPU. But we should get a good idea of what's going on there as soon as you start testing it. So what we've got with this configuration is two intake fans at the bottom of the case, and then we have the exhaust pretty much directly above uh, the CPU. So here you go, you can see we're in the low to high 80s again with the uh, GPU and the CPU. 
So both been run at 100%. So room temperature is still about 22.6. So what I'm gonna do is poke this little thing in again and get some temperatures from the inside. With the previous configuration, the rear of the case is 42.4. This is 44.3, calling it. Let's try and get the front. Ooh, I think that's as far forward as I can get. So we're a straight 40 degrees Celsius last time. We are 42.3, 42.4. Let's call it 42.4. So with this particular fan configuration, the air temperature inside the case is about two degrees warmer than it was when we had the fans going uh, from the side there to the exhaust over here. And the reason that is, let me show you. So if I grab this, the bottom one here is air temperature. The top one is this temperature probe. Now if I put this underneath here, because the air is getting uh, brought into uh, the case from such a close proximity to the desk, you can see that the PC is actually heating up the desk underneath it. So the temperature of the air underneath the PC is about 27 degrees. The air temperature in the room is 22.3 degrees. So it's just the air that you, because the desk is being warmed up by the PC, it, the air as it's flowing past is just getting warmed quicker, which is why it's about two degrees warmer inside the case. Uh, it's just not a very, very effective way of cooling the case essentially. What we need is to get sort of ambient air rather than air that's having to rush past a hot desk. So it's probably worth saying, don't don't try this at home. Just don't. Uh, we're kind of trained slash untrained professionals. Ah! We basically put the entire PC onto an empty box because we needed the smoke to come up through the bottoms. You know what? Let's see if it works. There we go. That's how it's done. Look at that. Right, so let's see what's happening. So as you can see, this fan that's here is feeding the GPU, right? And this fan here is just kind of like feeding this area here. And then all of this air is just a bit dead. It's not really doing much that, is it? You can see just all the air is, everything that's coming up through that one is going straight up to the GPU and then it's going up to the CPU and then it's exiting from the top and out the back there as well. That, that's probably mainly from the GPU pushing um, air out. But there's just a whole load of dead air over here now. It doesn't really look to be doing a lot of moving around at all. It's just hanging around. So that, I mean, that's why it's warmer. There's just a huge area here of air, just not really doing much. But you can see even this fan is actually feeding the GPU a little bit. So, so far, the, the previous configuration that we had, I think was more effective than this one, in both in terms of temperatures and in actually terms of uh, the physical airflow that we can see because basically you've got a lot of airflow on one side of the case and just not a lot of airflow over here, uh, which just means that the air over here is probably just heating up and heating up and heating up and it just isn't effectively moving around or doing anything. That's why the temperatures are just more, just hotter than they were before. So we're gonna need to move on to our, our last configuration now, which is just all the fans. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna fill this thing with fans. Uh, we're gonna see, you know, whether this, just having all the fans on all at the same time is giving us better airflow, better temperatures, or whether actually you're better off just with the two and one that we started with. So final configuration, you know what? Just another shout out to these Lian Lee fans, the, where's the box? Lian Lee Unifans SL120s. Oh my God, these things are so easy to build with. They're so good. Link in the description. Like I say, we're not being sponsored by these guys today. I just love these fans, so have a look at them. Uh, so we got the two fans at the back over here. Intake, drawing in the air. We've got the three fans at the bottom. Again, intake, drawing upwards. Then we've got the exhaust over here again. And we've got three fans at the top exhausting out there's a lot a lot of fans in there so i'm really really excited to see what the results are going to be like okay so final fan configuration again 100 percent stress testing we're torturing this thing today 88 degrees on the gpu 80 degrees on the cpu that's actually a little bit cooler one degree cooler than the previous test three degrees cooler than the original first test that we did gpus same 88 temperature probe time last fan configuration uh, 22.4, well, yeah, 22.4 degrees is our room temperature. Uh, so I'm gonna put this inside the case now. 
take the temperature at the front, take the temperature at the back and see if there's any difference. It's the first test with the two fans at the front, the exhaust fan at the back. The front of the case was 40 degrees. With the two fans at the bottom, the one fan at the top, the front of the case was 42.4 degrees. This test with all the fans, two at the front, three at the bottom, three at the top, exhaust in the back, 31.7 degrees. The air temperature in there is significantly less. There is some good air flow in there today. The all important back of the case where the GPU and the, and the CPU are situated. And this test number three, 37.3 calling it that is five degrees cooler than the first test seven degrees cooler than the second test there's some significant airflow happening inside this case the temperatures are on our sides the temperatures are great let's put some fog in this thing and actually see what direction the air's moving in here it comes so if you remember on the first test we said that the air around here was a little bit stagnant, it wasn't moving very much, it's just heating up and doing nothing. But by because we've got this one fan here that's blowing air through the bottom, basically the air comes in, it does like a 90 degree turn, and anything that gets left behind here is just getting pushed around by this fan. So you can see the air comes in, takes a 90 degree turn, you can see it just getting pushed through those, that fan into the CPU, cooling the CPU, you're getting all the hit, so you can see the air coming underneath here as well, feeding the GPU, so we've got air coming in from the side, we've got air coming in from the bottom, feeding the GPU with all that cold air, which is what it wants. The heat is coming up, it's getting exhausted straight away through there, anything that's left over is getting exhausted at the top. That is good airflow, I like it. Look how good it is, that's a great test, man. Oh, swash. <laughs> it is, that's it, it's perfect even distribution of air. That is exactly what you want from a case. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so glad that we started putting fog into cases. It's brilliant. The case was created for overclocking. Obviously, we're stressing this thing to 100% and we're still getting great temperatures. We're still getting great airflow. The man knows what he's doing. It's a great case. I love it. I mean, I just filled that thing with fog and it's just getting it just exhausted out perfectly. So as you can see, with the two fans at the front, the one at the back, the three at the bottom, the three at the top, Room temperature was still, 20, well, 22.4, so we've been around that 22.3 to 22.6 uh, area of the room temperature. CPU, 80 degrees. That's one degree less than the previous test and three degrees less than the first test. The GPU is a stack, 88 degrees. The reason they don't change too much is because we are stress testing to 100%. So what's important is the air temperature inside the case. And with this configuration, at the front, we had 31.4 degrees Celsius. 37.3 degrees celsius at the back that's 88.52 fahrenheit at the front 99.14 fahrenheit at the back so this front temperature is 11 degrees less than having two fans at the bottom one fan at the top and 8.6 degrees less than just having the two at the front and the one at the back that is a much much more effective way of cooling your system and that is great airflow at the back seven degrees cooler than the two at the bottom, one at the top. 5.1 degrees cooler than two at the front, one at the back. This, if you're gonna buy this case, if you're gonna buy a Lian Lee O11 Dynamic case, the mini case, you have to fill it with fans. Not only because it looks amazing, but it just works. So thanks for watching, really important. Let us know which case you want next. Get in the comments, tell me which case you want me to uh, add to the list for us to test. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos. Hit the notification bell so you never miss one of our videos. And give me a thumbs up if you like it. Thanks for watching.